Hello and welcome. Now, those of you who follow PM Express religiously, uh, you've noticed that every Thursday we theme it and went through a branding series so we were thought that uh, don't just expect that your clients or your customers would know what you have, you have to say it. So yes, of course, we have branded our Thursdays and since December we are all going to get religious. We've decided that every Thursday we'll look at religion and culture. And those of you who follow That's My Opinion on Joy FM, every time I start the show, I start with a quotation that goes like, Until the lions have their own historians, the tales of hunting would always glorify the hunter. So this month of Thursdays, we are going to tell our own story. And that's why we're here. We're going to start with traditional African religion and culture, the conflicts, the differences, and the similarities. And we are starting with no other than Osofu Kofiche Ahaji, who is a thespian traditionalist, if there's anything such as that. But he has taught me a lot of things. We go way back. And so we decided to start with him and educate ourselves on traditional African religion, God, there's so much, and it's, uh, as soon as you mention it, you know, all alarm bells start ringing that, hey, hold on, you are going near heathenism, you're going near, near hell, satanism, and all that, but that's what we're here to talk about. Osofu, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Nana. And it's see. a pleasure being on your show. No, it's a pleasure to have you on my show. Let me say we are sat just by the poolside of Alisa Hotel, and uh, we're not going to swim, but we're going to delve into Deep, deep, deep subject. But also, let me start with, uh, can we draw a line between culture and traditional African religion? Drawing a line between culture and traditional African religion will seem to be an impossibility. Religion yeah. is an inseparable aspect of culture. When uh, the foreigners came, they made us understand that culture is a separate discipline, religion a separate one, education, all these things were separated. But culture is the totality of the human personality or animal or even the trees and what have you. They all have the culture. Within our culture, we have our languages, so we have our names. Whatever we do as uh, human beings or whatever, all constitute part and parcel of our culture. So you can't separate religion from culture. Hmm. Now that, that makes it very tricky because uh, there are certain religions which are not from our culture. So then what then happens to, let's say, Christianity, let's say, uh, the Baha'i faith, let's say, you know, what then happens? <laughs> Christianity is an inseparable aspect of foreign culture. So to accept to be a Christian means you are de-Africanizing yourself. You are following a cultural practice which is alien to you. The other time the issue arose uh, in the program when they were saying, asking whether men of God should enter into politics. Now our culture teaches us that we are often governed by our chiefs and our kings. And they cannot separate themselves from the black stool and whatever goes into that aspect of our administration. So when you say that you are going to involve men of God, uh, those are the Christians, in politics, the politics we are talking about is the white man's politics and that is his culture. Mm -hmm. That's why today we can have India as the largest democracy in the world. Then you ask yourself, what becomes of America, uh, Greece, and all these ones? Are they not democracies? They are supposed to be democracies. But what they've done is to export what they think is good for the Indians. What they think is good for us, though they tell us that we must be democratic. But our chiefs are democratic. Hmm? The chiefs don't come out from the moon or the outer skies, they are part of us. And we have a system whereby a chief rises to that position. When he goes off, there is a system which we follow in replacing him. You cannot be a chief and say that you are not going to abide by the dictates of the black stool or the religious practices 
associated with our system of governance. All right? Yeah. So what we are doing today, what we have in this country today, is borrowing other people's culture and uh, superimposing it on ours. It, it, you see, one then argues is that our culture has become very static and that, you know, times have moved on so much. Should we... Which know, aspect of the culture is static? Well, I mean, uh, our, our language, for instance, is not yeah. growing. As, creation, as new things are coming, you know, we don't have new words for, you know, new inventions. Uh, therefore, you have to supplement it with either a French one or an English one. Now let me ask you, what is the origin of the word canopy? I don't know. Mm. Canopy is not an English word. I see. Now I tell you that the father of Imhotep was canopy. They call him canopy. Canopy in ancient Egypt only represented the jar which contains the decaying part of the human being. You know that during ancient Egyptian era, there was the mummification. Yeah. So you have to take all those parts of the body which will just destroy the preservation. So they put them into a jar. When the white people got there and they heard that the name of the jar is Ka, Kanofe, so they said, no, this is the canopic jar. The jar which contains the Ka of the human. You, when you look into the hieroglyphs, you will see that the car is represented by the two arms raised up in this form. That is car. That is the alter ego, the other self. Now they call that the spirit. The spirit of the person. When they take off your hair now, hair of a dead person, and you want to travel with that hair, you will be in trouble. Have you experienced that one? No. Okay. Just take the hair and the fingernails of a dead person and try to sit in a vehicle traveling with it. If you don't perform the necessary rituals, that vehicle will throw you off. I see. Because that is the spirit of the person. So you will see that someone is dead. When you look at the fingernails, you see they are still growing. Mm -hmm. The hair is still growing. So, which means they are separate from that thing which had left that body. They grow on their own. And those are the things we must study. Now when we come back to the question, now let us look at the construction of the pyramids. Who constructed them? They were surely not the white people who brought us their concept of education. No. Herodotus will tell you that those who built the ancient Egyptian civilization we're just like you and me. The black Egyptians. They were black people. Where have they gone to? They embarked upon the Exodus. If they went across the Red Sea, the land of uh, Jordan, uh, Israel, Saudi Arabia, would have been the land of uh, the Semites, complete blacks. But today is the land of the, black, uh, the Semites. And Ali Mazuri said, the Arabs cannot be defined by their, the texture of their skin. We, as blacks, we have something which is very unique. Now, there was a fear of the sun. You see, the sun has given us a shade. We have that thing in our body which is known as the melanin, which links us up to the ultraviolet rays of the sun. So we can get skin cancer when we are, even when the sun's rays are 100 degrees, no, we don't have. So we have that sun which says that, this is my island in the sun, Harry Belafonte. It is the, our island in the sun because we are children of the sun. So we say, I, the sun, S-O-N, and the father, S-U-N, are one. And the white people took that one and transpositioned it and said there was somebody called Yeshua ben Yosef or Jesus the Christ who said, I and the Father are one. Before that, we had already said it? It has been there. Go and take the hieroglyphs. 
where Sir Wallace Bedge brought all the things he had presented today as the Holy Bible. You will get everything in there. The book of Psalms, which was supposed to have been written by David and Solomon, you will get all in there. They have been written down. In fact, when you look at this one, what is it? The oldest known Bible goes online. Where did they get it? They got it from Sinai Peninsula. And Sinai up till today is part and parcel of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So if the Bible came out of Egypt, what are we being told? Why are they lying? It means that what came out of Egypt is not what is being presented to us. Mm -hmm. So you go into the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. They will tell you that Samuel was born out of the magnanimity of the deity in the shrine. But today they say it's the temple of God. Let us admit that one. All the things which are said today that the Trokoshis are doing, is the same thing which Hannah said in the Bible. That the son given to him by that energy, that son, no razor is to touch the hair. And that is what we have. Now we have the Rastafarians, mm -hmm. the children of Ra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't shave their hair. But that was what was done in the Bible. That was what our ancestors do. Today, if your wife does not give birth, you have uh, a marriage and several years you are not having any child. Go to the shrine. Go and commit yourself to the shrine. That if you have a child, you will devote that child to the shrine. Also, for that, you see, that's, that's where the conflict begins. Because, Which conflict? Uh, because, you see, the, the shrine is deemed to be not godly and therefore hedonic. You know, so who deems it to be? society. I don't know where... Which part of society? Have you read King Leopold II when you were sending the missionaries to the Congo? I, I have read it. You read? Yes, I have read And he tells them that don't teach the African the knowledge of God because he already knows God. He knows to kill is bad. He admitted all those ones. And he says that go and tell them the gospel that it is better for you to be poor to enter into the kingdom of God than to be rich. So that they don't compete with the Belgians on the riches of our land. Mm -hmm. Today you go to Obuasi, who owns the mines there? It is the white man who says that, no, don't be rich. You always be poor. I will take care of you. So when you go and pay your tithe, the tithe is used to develop Belgian businesses. And they come back and give you what they call our loans. They call loans. Mm -hmm. And you are very happy with it. You are happy with your own wealth which they have taken away from you and brought back to you as loan and you pay three or five times the amount they took from you. Mm -hmm. And you are happy and you, tell, you say that they are glorifying you. They have brought God. Who told you in the first place that God is not omnipotent? Did anybody tell you that? No. Did anybody tell you that God is not omnipresent? No. Did anybody tell you that God is not the all-seeing one? But uh, Who told you God discriminated against you? But God, God never seemed to be, you know, around West Africa, you know, in, in, in the olden days. You know, <laughs> he, he was always seemed to be Egypt and Israel and, you know, Barcelona and, you know, those places. He, he, he wasn't sort of, you know... Uh, you introduce in, in this program by saying that until the lion comes out with his history, the hunter will always be the boss. Mm -hmm. So, when they brought what they call their story, their story must always claim that God lives with them and not with you. I have just shown you that in the book of Samuel, Hannah went to the shrine. You will choose to call that one a temple. Mm -hmm. Fine. That is your problem. But it's a shrine. And it is still happening here. 
So who says that God lives just somewhere else? If he lives only in Europe or the Middle East, then he is not an omnipotent God. Then he is not omnipresent. Mm -hmm. And it will amount to he discriminating, if only he is a he, discriminating against the, the other creations. In your Bible, you are told that God created all things in pairs except humanity. He created the man and went to sleep. Later on, he realized that the man needed a woman. But in creating the lions and all these ones, God didn't forget that the lions need lionesses. The cows need the bulls. So God create every, created everything in pairs. Why is it that it is only in the case of humanity that God was alleged to have forgotten about a female partner? And you see where the problem of discrimination against women came from. It's from the Christian religion. When you come to your Akan religion now, what do you say? O Chediam Pong, O Nyanku Pong, Kwami, Asasi, Ya. That's the male female energy. When you come to the guns, Ata, Na, Nyongbo. Ata, male, Na, female. When you get to the Aves, you have Mau Sogbo Lisa. Sogbo male, Lisa female. Hmm? You also have To for father, Ho No, No for mother. To Ho No. But when the white man comes, he says, God the Father, God the Son, and God does something else, the Holy Spirit. But there is no woman in the Trinity. That's what we're going to come and find out. How come, I haven't thought of it that though, you know, that all of a sudden Eve seemed to have appeared later and not in pair as in Adam. We'll come back and continue the story. Don't even move, it's getting exciting. Well, thank you very much for staying. Of course you stay, because it's getting really intriguing. Even, even I stayed. <laughs> well, just before we went on the break, we just wanted to find out how come, you know, before the age of the Bible, it was all, you know, man and woman, male and female, and then all of a sudden, we go to the Eden, and then Adam comes, and then it takes a couple of weeks before... Eve pops up. Is, is there any particular reason why she comes late in, in, in the story of Genesis? Well, the story of Genesis is a fallacy. Hmm. Now we have a book known, uh, authored by Sir Wallace Berge. Hmm. And he named that book the Book of the Dead or the Book of Life and Death. Hmm. Why did he name it the Book of Life and Death? He named it the Book of Life and Death because when you are born in ancient Egypt, into the royal family, you have a scribe who will record your birth mm -hmm. up to your death. When you are dead, they roll the papyrus scrolls and put under your pillow wow. in the grave or the tomb. They called it the sarcophagus. Mm -hmm. So when all these grave looters went and found these papyri scrolls, they sold them. A whole lot went to the Russians, who in turn sold them back to the British. And when they transcribed, then they had to coin the story. But then when you go into the Vatican, that's where you have most of the stories about ancient Egypt. All their discoveries, everything. How did that come about? I believe in your study of uh, the white man's story. You might have uh, heard about Julius Caesar yeah. going into Egypt and uh, marrying or raping Cleopatra. A Cleopatra, we have always been made to believe she was uh, white. But J. Roger says that Cleopatra was a typical black woman. From Ethiopia? No, in Egypt. Okay. Now you know what happened. The naming and all these ones. The white man, I asked uh, 
our producer, how she came by all these uh, foreign names. <laughs> and I asked the gentleman over there how he came by the Lord and what have you. I have a pamphlet in my bag, which I won't bring up. It's the 90th anniversary celebration of the EP Church of Chama. Right, uh, somebody said he heard of the missionaries preaching the gospel, so he went there. And when the missionaries came to Chama, what did they do? They renamed all the people and gave them slave names. Now, when you look at the forehead of the Sphinx, what will you see? You will see the head. The head of uh, the python mm -hmm. and the head of the vulture are supposed to be here. Mm? There, you have the head of, you call it python or cobra. Yeah. You go into India, what do you see? You see a whole lot of snakes in there. When you come to rest, they tell us that Adam, Eve went and was deceived by the snake to eat the forbidden fruit. But I would like to let it be made clear that you, Nana, when you are in your room, you can be in your room with a snake or a python. You can live for so many years. If you don't make up your mind to attack it, it will live with you in peace. But the moment you think that, no, this snake is an unwanted guest, you want to attack it, it develops that super consciousness and defends itself. And you know what it will do to you? It will look at your heel. That is where the life force is. And when it bites there, you are gone. But you can live with the snake. It won't do you anything. Now, to divert us from that story, they said it was the snake which went and uh, deceived Eve. Where did all that story come from? When Cleopatra, I was talking about Cleopatra and Julius Caesar, they had a son called Caesarus. Julius Caesar's wife back in Rome didn't have any child with the woman, with Julius Caesar. So when he came and got Cleopatra giving him a child, he said, no, I will stay here. Then the Romans said, no, you as our general, you can't go and live with a woman. Come back home. When he got back home, Cleopatra wanted to prove her loyalty to him. So she gathered the scribes with all the inventions and what have you, and sent them to Rome to show them that, oh, in fact, she is actually in love with Julius Caesar. It was at that point that they killed Julius Caesar. And what did Julius Caesar say in the final stages? She asked Brutus, Ete Brute, and you Brutus too? You have bought into that story? And Brutus stabbed him to death. Then Mark Antony went and married uh, Cleopatra so that they can continue and understand the mentality of ancient Egyptians who built the civilization of the Nile Valley. They have got their stuff. When you go into the Vatican today, you go into the underground, you will still find those papyri scrolls. We have a papyrus called the Turin Papyrus. I don't know if you know what a papyrus is. Well, the, uh, the back, you know, like the beating back. No, right it is a plant. It grows with the leaves standing on top of it. Like uh, what uh, my people use in making the cha-cha, mm -hmm. that mattress. Mm -hmm. But this one is triangular. So you remove the back and you cut the inner stuff. Soak it in water two weeks. You put a weight on it. Another two weeks, you take it up, you have made paper. And you have papyrus growing along the Nile in the Lalibela region of Ethiopia in the Tana Lake. And papyrus is such a plant that crocodiles don't drink water. You know that one, I believe. Yes. Okay, so papyrus soaks water. When you read in the Bible, they said, uh, and uh, Moses was taken and put into a basket in the river. And the basket was made out of papyrus. The reason was that 
the crocodile will not come and attack that child in the basket. Hmm? So when all these things were taken, then they started renaming them. You have a German Ebers papyrus. Ebers is a German. Papyrus does not grow in Germany. So where did they get it from? You have some white Americans in Chicago and all this one. They all have papyrus named after them. The medical papyrus is named the Smith papyrus. Why? Because they want to obliterate your great-grandfather's contribution to civilization. Then they tell you that all oh, you people were living naked. Go into WikiLeaks and you will see that ancient Egyptians who were blacks were clothing themselves at the time that these white people were naked. Today they tell us that they brought us clothing. And unfortunately we have bought into that mm -hmm. one. And we are glorifying them. Also, was traditional African religion adapt? I mean, would we accept... Uh, African culture, not to religion. African culture. African culture. Would we accept, like, if someone is Buddhist, if someone is a Catholic, someone is a Presbyterian? Because, you know, like, if you're a Christian, it's, you know, it's Christianity or nothing. Uh, Islam will say it's Islam or nothing. You know, uh, how adaptive is the African culture? African culture believes in the totality of the human being. The African believes that God is omnipotent. God never discriminates against anybody. So if you come, he receives you. I believe in your village you might have some strangers. And he comes looking for land to farm. So you two go and farm over there. So when the Greeks came, to inhabit that portion we call Northeast Africa. So, okay, you live here. But the only thing they insisted was that when you come, before you can enter into the temples, you must be circumcised. Mm. If you are not circumcised, please forget it. You can't enter into the sacred temple. So African has always been receptive because it is out of the belly of the African that all the other races came from. So when you come, you say you are a Buddhist. But who is a Buddhist? What is the meaning of Buddha? I haven't researched that far. If you research, you will not find it. It simply says, respect the snake. Hmm? So if you are respecting the snake, we know from way back from Egypt, coming down to this place, you know we created a home for the snake deity. You know where that snake deity no. is? Oh, you should know. It's the home, man. The home of the snake, the home, man. You have the snake temple here. Then opposite it, you have the Catholic cathedral of uh, Wida. When Pope, John the Paul, when Pope John Paul II came down to Dahomey, he got down from the car in front of the cathedral, and they were expecting him to enter into the cathedral. He went behind the car and went and paid obeisance to the snake deity. You go in there and you see all these uh, huge pythons. They glorify the snake deity. Then Pope John Paul II said, we have all the powers and the energies, but we are not making use of them. We allow ourselves to be taken for jolly good rights, and we are glorifying our oppression. Hmm? We have the Snake River in Egypt. They changed their name and called it the Nile. But ancient Egyptians said that river flows like a snake which has gone to take its waters from the highlands of Ethiopia and comes down to the sea. So they called it Serda, the divine snake river. The Greeks said, no, that name is showing something. So let's change it to Nile. And unfortunately, some of us have bought into that joke and we say that the Nile actually means nigh. All right. 
you call it anything. The white man gets glorified. He is happy that you are following his story and you are banditing it about, but he knows what he has done to you. And he has taken your mind away from yourself. And you have become a slave. So Bob Marley will tell you, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. So for, you see, one thing that Christianity professes is uh, love your neighbor as thyself. So, I mean, whether you were... Uh, were we not loving ourselves? I just cited the example that when somebody comes to you in your village, you give him a place to live. Mm -hmm. Was that not love? Yes. So what did Christianity bring which is different from that one? All Christianity succeeded in doing is to demarcate a place and call it their own. Whereas we live freely. They come, they say, no, this place is the parish of whatever, and they fence it. But when you go to our shrines, oh, except for a small cubicle there, the, the whole place is open. You can go anytime. You can stand anywhere and call upon the divinity, and it will respond to you. But in the case of the Christians, they say, you must go into the temple, go and kneel down before somebody who will tell you your sins are forgiven. Meanwhile, he himself is more sinful than you. <laughs> so Christianity didn't bring anything new. If they succeeded, they succeeded in destroying our heritage. Is there any conflict between Islam and our culture? There is a lot. You see, while those scribes took some of the documents into Rome, the others rushed into Saudi Arabia. So you have the Holy Quran, the Holy Bible. How did it come about that the Holy Quran and the Holy Bible talks about Abraham's sacrifice of the son? They all say the same thing. Where did they get that one from? They got it from the Nile Valley Kingdom of the Pharaohs. Hmm? Now today, we leave all that we have. What, what do you have? The white people, they come in the name of Christianity into Ghana. What is it that they have seen about Ghana? There mm -hmm. is something in Ghana. I'm going to take a break and we'll find out what is it they have seen in Ghana. And then, you know, we have really big professors, um, very well learned men who lead all these churches. And I'm sure they've read all these things. Professor so why, of what? <laughs> theology, who knows? Why aren't we changing our story? Stay tuned. The Akpalu music. If you go to Akati today, all the lyrics of Akpalu music have been changed into Christian music. No, there is this uh, divination system. When you go to a diviner... Anyway, thanks for staying, but we are back, because you know what, the conversation never <laughs> ended. So we, we, we're still on. You know, th thank you for staying. <laughs> we have uh, this divination system. In fact, Herodotus described the ancient Egyptians as possessing the powers of divination to interpret the will of God. Right? The divination system, you have a combination of sa and woli. So that gives you sauli. And when you go to the diviner and he divines sauli for you, he tells you that you are about to embark on a project or a travel. If you don't make the necessary sacrifices, don't go. Mm -hmm. So there is a song that Sauli told you not to go because there is a pitfall there. Mm -hmm. If you went, you will meet it. They have changed it and put uh, Jesus there. The Jesus is inviting you to come to him in heaven. But that is not the song. Hmm? There is another one. Another they have changed it. That I have received Jesus. Bangla says that he is in trouble. He doesn't have people who will listen to him. Now they say that I have received Jesus. I will flow freely into heaven. Huh? 
that is not what we are expected to do. You will get some in the account lyrics to everywhere we are changing. We are changing because we have become, uh, with due reverence to your viewers, we have become exceptionally stupid. We have refused to accept what the creative energy called God has given us. And we are accepting everything which the white man tells us. You see, you know, you say God has given us, and I, I face this challenge every day because any time I say I'm a chief or I'm a traditional ruler, I find people sympathize with me, those who want to redeem me or probably exorcise me because, uh, you know, I'm Nanansa, I'm Nanansa Kwawe, and not David, Solomon, or, you know, Isaac or something like that. And even though I can't pinpoint who said this or who started this, you know, also if we can move away from the fact that that is the norm that look so far as i am a chief and i'm a custodian of a black stew it is not godly enough did we not have uh, king david in the bible yes we did. was he not a christian or he was a jew well, i think he was a jew now up till today don't we have uh, even the queen of england mm -hmm. the queen of belgium are they not supposed to be christians yeah. Why do they have queens and kings? We have the Prince Charles, and when the, daughter, the wife was going to give birth, it became a whole hula balu, and they had the effrontery to come and tell us that we must practice homosexualism. They should have practiced homosexualism, and his wife would not have given birth. And all the hula balu about that uh, royal child will not come. But they come and tell us we must do that one. Why? So that our population will reduce. We will not be interested in the wealth that we have in our side of the world. We were to come back to the question of why Ghana is important, and we will mm -hmm. come back to that one. Now, if they continue telling us this, and we continue imbibing, we will continue to live in a fool's paradise. Why is Ghana so important that everybody wants to come to Ghana? Where was Egypt, the ancient Egypt? The ancient Egypt was in the center of the old world. And when the ancient Egyptians moved, where did they go to? They came to the center of the new world, which is Ghana. This is the center of the universe. All the mystic energies are gathered here. Hmm? So Ghana is very important. Why we just said that we dreamt and we found oil, we have the gold, we have the diamond, we have the bauxite, we have the manganese, we have the uranium, everything that we need we have. The white man knows that these people, if we allow them to recognize their potential, they will uh, overtake the world. So. There is somebody who went to Britain and came back and he said uh, he is an international evangelist. They all continue coming. The white man will take you and go and screw your mind and send you back. You, you are from uh, close to the royal family. So go back there and tell them that the black stool is bad. Collect that black stool and give to me. I will pay you dollars. King Leopold said, these people, the juju they have, why, what is juju? They say it's a play thing, juju, play in French. But they have some energy in that thing. Go and take it away from them so that they cannot challenge you. Our ancestors, what couldn't they do? He is sitting down here with you and you are talking. The next moment he walks this way, and you will hear of him in the U.S. He is walking this way, you are looking at him, you don't see him any longer. We have all those powers, so they must take all those powers away from us. You heard of Major Seth Anthony. Mm -hmm. He led the campaign in Burma. And when you meet some of those survivors of the Second World War, they will tell you, said Anthony, he will walk with the troops. He will tell you that their enemies are around here. They're going to attack. So please, 
you all follow me. And they will follow him. And the enemy attacks don't affect him. Then they will come and grab you. What have we not done? We have all those energies here in this. Ah, uh, maybe we have uh, betrayed our heritage. So you will say God but, forsaken but, but, but we live here. So how can they from there realize we have it and we not have an idea that we have it here? Now when you go to all the bookshops in this country and you're looking for the Egyptian book of life and death, you will not get. Why? Because they don't want you to know. When I got to the U.S., I went to North Carolina, walking through a second-hand bookshop. I got to the Book of the Dead, and I bought one. I showed it to a driver friend. He said, no, this is not the correct one. There is another one. And I saw a bigger one. I bought it. Then one professor from uh, North Carolina University, he said, oh, but this is just a small bit of it. And he took me to the African-American uh, library. And I saw a huge one. So they have all these things. And you see, we didn't go to Egypt to go and take anything. We came with our minds and with our divination materials. They went and they lifted the mountains. Because all, every part of Egypt, those rocks, they contain all the sacred writings. So when the Romans had all these papyrus texts and they felt that they have got the thing, Martin Luther got to realize that, oh, after all, what you said was given to you by God is the same thing which has been written on the rocks. So he said, okay, then if you form your Catholic Church, I will start with my reformation. And when the British also got to realize, that, oh, after all, the thing was not given to you by God. It is uh, in Egypt. Then they went and took some. The Americans said, ah, we will also take some. Then the Americans sent ships and were lifting. You remember just uh, October 22nd. You know the importance of October 22nd? No. In the Rosicrucian diary. February 22nd, October 22nd are the days of the solar lumière, the day the sun god will take his meal on the altar. So the Rosicrucians will fly all the way from California and every part of the world and assemble in Egypt into the temple where the solar, the sun god has his altar. And they will go and receive their blessings from there. Then they come back and tell us that no, we are worshipping stones and what have you. What can African culture do, or the Ghanaian culture, in 2014? I mean, it's almost... A, is dead. Well, 2015. I mean, it's almost extinct, uh, if you ask me, because you know, in our schools it's discouraged. And, uh, independence, we're not allowed to pour libation. I mean, you're not allowed to remember ancestors that are African or Ghanaian inclined. It's okay to, you know, make reference to Isaac, Jehoshaphat, you know, whoever it is. But... You know, you can't call on Kwame Nkrumah or Yas on a, you know, on a, on a big day. It's not you allowed. know the problem we have? Like I said from the beginning, the system of governance we have is uh, borrowed. And as part of that system, we have this concept of miseducation. Now, I am an African, you are an African. Yeah. But we are speaking some language which is strange to us. That is what the Englishman said the sun will never set on the British Empire. When we went to South Africa and uh, that, uh, was it an Argentinian uh, player used the hand in uh, scoring mm -hmm. the goal? What was his name? Suarez. Suarez. Has that name not entered into the English dictionary? And uh, anybody who is crafty enough to steal from the other? What does not belong to him is uh, Suarezing. <laughs> hmm? So you look at the English dictionary and you will see all manner of languages piled up there. And they make sure that you don't have faith in yourself. 
our educational system, they call it educational system, but it's miseducation. Because within our culture, we have our education. Mm -hmm. We know that within our culture, we can plant cassava without going to an agri school. We can plant the coconut tree, and now people will tell you the number of years the coconut tree will take to mature. But we go to agri uh, universities, and we don't even know how to plant potato. We go to Fisheries University, where are the fishermen? You go to Jamestown Beach. How many of the fishermen there have attended any fishery school? They haven't. But they know, they look at the weather and they tell you that there is fish in abundance this way. Let's go there. They go and they bring the fish. Our people in the villages, they are old people. They look at the sky and tell you it's going to rain. They don't need any machine. Whilst we have meteorological services department telling you it's going to rain today and uh, you expect the rain, it will never come. Look at that old man and he will tell you that it is going to rain and it will rain. We did some ritual the other time in uh, commemorating the solar lumiere, or the, the Jews call it the Passover. On the 23rd of uh, October in Chama. And any time you do that one, it must rain. 2012, we did it. And there was uh, that rain disaster in Accra where the rain carried people. And uh, 2014, we've done it. And it rains, it takes over the whole country. That is part of the energy which we have. But we don't recognize it. Because our professors, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, your friend, uh, Kofi Wayo. Professor, do nothing. Professor Minifi. <laughs> what are they professing? But is it something which somebody has written? Also for, then you go and come and claim that you are a professor. You don't even know how many days it takes, how many seeds are there in a pepper. And you are an agri professor. Hmm? I, I don't know. I don't want to divert, but is there a specific number of seeds that are in pepper? Check it up. I will check it up. But <laughs> let's check it up. If you have Google, Google it. Let's see how many seeds we have in pepper. But you see, my, my, my question now is, and going back to professors, I mean, they are eminent learned people leading... Learned in what? Well, learning in theology, and I'm yeah, sure... Who, who's theology? Oh, the biblical theology, historical theology. Yeah, historical and biblical theology. Did they invent those ones, or somebody wrote and gave to them to learn and get graduated in somebody's thing? Surely they must have come across you know, the Cabra Narcast and stuff along the no, way. No, they don't want to look at them. Uh, is he Professor Kofi Anidoho? The other time he appeared on telly, GTV, and said uh, he is part of those who benefit from the decadent uh, system. They know that the thing is not good. But uh, who says? No Kofi, uh, with apologies to KSM. <laughs> the no Kofi, they will take, they will have to hold on to it. They will have to continue miseducating the people misinforming us because of the nook of you. But I think, also, we have to do a part two on this show. I don't know how, but we'll speak to Jennifer and find out if we need to continue this conversation because we have only just begun, you know, and uh, I think we have to complete this conversation. But every Thursday, you tune in, and this is the line of conversation we are going to have the conflict between religion and culture so next week thursday we're coming back to you on the same subject stage